We're joined by Dr. Rebecca Grant. She's national security and a military analyst and president of IRIS Independent Research. So, Dr. Grant, we just heard General Keene say that uh, the administration likely has good intelligence that there's a threat to U.S. troops in the region. Uh, what do you think they have and how serious is that threat? Well, Iran is reacting to the sanctions, and I think there's clearly some good intelligence. I think that's why Secretary Pompeo stopped off in Iraq. So what they're seeing is increased indications and warning of possible threats to our forces there. We have planes flying out of several bases, 5,000 forces in Iraq, U.S. Navy forces there. But the problem with Iran is you've got to send a really bold message. It's got to be all caps, and it has to say, don't try it. That's why we see this extra level of military forces going into the region. You know what some of the critics are saying? They are accusing the administration of trying to hype this up. Uh, here's Chuck Hagel, former Obama defense secretary, uh, saying, quote, it's not unusual to have an aircraft battle group in the Persian Gulf. We do that all the time. But I'm concerned that this administration is baiting Iran in a very dangerous way. Do you buy that? None of this is provocative, and the CENTCOM commander, General McKenzie, has said we don't seek conflict with Iran. Now, having said that, note to Iran, our U.S. bomber crews have been studying the Iran target set for 20 years. They are more than ready. And so, Eric, the point is that Iran tends to be very reckless, prone to mischief. They make stupid diplomatic moves. And to deter and make sure our forces, forces are safe, we have to be extra clear that Iran just can't try it. We can't risk them being reckless. And that's what I see the administration doing, both with the force deployments and the messaging. Do you think this is enough? Should we do more? It looks like it's good. What I see here is a few more pieces moved onto the chessboard. I'm interested that General McKenzie, who is a Marine, has deployed the USS Arlington. That's an amphib, a landing dock ship. And it brings him some extra capability close by to deal with the Iranian small boat threat. He also has some extra helicopters and, of course, some Marines. The B-52s, instead of sending one or two, they've sent four, again, making the message very clear. And those B-52s also have an excellent overwater search and weapons capability. And then, of course, very important that we see Patriot missiles and missile batteries going in to beef up the presence that's already there for the netted air defense of the Gulf region, U.S. forces and our allies. Yeah, you mentioned the small boats. They are for years notorious for basically like little gnats, little... Uh you know, annoying gnats that just kind of swarm near our naval ships. And at one point, it has been said that the president, uh, while he was running, said just blow one of them out of the water, you know, and that'll send Tehran a, a message that the Obama administration, you know, never did that. Is that a sufficient way to deal with that threat? Do you think that potentially could be where their hair trigger uh, in this uh, conflict could be set off in, in some type of confrontation with those little uh, speedboats that they do and use to harass our naval assets. Right, the Revolutionary Guard speedboats, they're constantly talking about swarming and having 100 boats. We haven't seen them do that. You know, Iran talks a good game. Their military capabilities aren't as strong as they say they are, but it requires a lot of professionalism from our U.S. Navy to be present and in, in that tight coastal water area. But they're more than capable of dealing with that threat, and I think the USS Arlington will help. The other big worry, of course, is Iran's ballistic and cruise missiles. And the Patriots going in there, Eric, it's really important to note, these aren't your 1991 Gulf War Patriot batteries. There is a new Gem T missile that has an excellent fuse, excellent seeker, and is really more than capable of dealing with the very nasty Iranian cruise missile threat. I think in addition to possible terror attacks sponsored by Iran, that ballistic and cruise missile threat is really on the minds of our commanders. And so these forces are very much targeted to deter and to intercept that missile threat if Iran is stupid enough to try it. And where were they? without giving up anything, where do you think they would be placed, number one? And number two, do you think they can protect uh, land like uh, Israel's Iron Dome? 
Right. So our Patriot batteries are in several of our regional allies. I think that's pretty well known. It's a great system. It's an air and missile defense interceptor, the best in the world and very much capable of doing that. And that means that our forces still have the ability to operate with a degree of safety there. And again, it's deterrence. It's time to put the economic squeeze on Iran with the sanctions. We've got to buckle down the military piece and make it double extra clear that Iran knows they're overmatched against our forces in the Gulf. Well, Do not try it. Yeah, you know, don't, don't tell that to some Iranians. Here's what was uh, reported by the Iranian student news agency via Reuters uh, uh, from a, uh, uh, one of the leaders there in Ayatollah. Uh, their billion-dollar fleet, meaning us, can be destroyed with one missile. If they attempt any move, they will face dozens of missiles because at that time, officials won't be in charge to act cautiously. But instead, things will be in the hands of our beloved leader, Alatollah Ali Khamenei. In other words, they're saying they think they can destroy our warship with one missile. Talk about talking a good game. Is that even at all in any realm of reality in the universe plausible at all? typical rhetoric for them and I would say no they don't have that capability but Eric it shows you how bad their intention is Iran does have at least 10 separate types of ballistic missiles deployed or in development this is not a state that we can trust they've made the threats about moving towards enriching uranium everything they do worst diplomats in the world reckless stupid and I don't think they have that capability but the fact that they would threaten it is all the more reason for us to deploy our forces work with allies and keep pressure on to get some change we cannot live as a world with this regime for the next millions of years they have got to understand they need to be part of the world order knock off the terrorism the provocative military deployments and do not violate that nuclear deal. And they have the blood of 603 American servicemen and women who were killed in Iraq by Iranian backed uh, forces. Correct. Dr. Rebecca Grant, always good to see you. Thank you for your insight today. Thank you. Thank you.